Something's going on with this guy. I'm sorry, you're alive. Check, check, check. Getting God good. Oh, it does. Everybody stand up. I know it's a rainy day, but praise God. It's, it, we know that heaven is not going to be any rainy days. Amen. Let's all stand up. Let's say our little, let's say our little saying together. Ready? <laughs> These are the two most important hours of my week. Help me to cherish them. I'm here today to worship, not to be entertained. I'm singing to an audience of one. They accept my worship, oh Lord. Go ahead to the next one. Ready? We're going to say this together too. Thank you, God, for this new year, start, opportunities, challenges, victories. Help me to take advantage of these new opportunities. Give the Lord a hand clap. All right. Are you ready? Let's go ahead and start singing a little bit. Y'all ready to sing a little bit? I know, I know with the rain, it's going to be, be slow coming in, but that'll be okay. Ready? But for my time, yes, this is the place we packed out. By faith. Are <laughs> or not over up? He's shaking his head, so if y'all looking at me can see me. John's shaking his head. If you can't see me, he's shaking it for a good reason. <laughs>
spoken request this morning. Love lived in hands, special needs, lost loved ones. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Father, we thank you for this day and the time and opportunity that we have in your house to come together in one mind and one accord. And we ask that your presence would be here this day, this hour, to touch and minister to each and every one here and each and every request, Lord God. For we know in your presence, Father, things change. And Father, we just ask that your presence would be here in the remainder of this service, the point of pastor. Prepare our hearts to receive the message that you have for us this day to carry it out into the battlefield. And we'll thank you for everything that's said and done. In Christ Jesus' name, the church said. Amen. Amen. Time to receive our offering, too. Remember, uh, you drop it off in the back, or excuse me, the front. <laughs> the little grass hangs up in front. You can drop it in coming in or drop it off going out. But if you've already dropped it off, put your hand up. If you haven't, put your offering up. We're going we're gonna to say this together. Everybody ready? Here we go. I lift my offering to you, that it please you, O Lord. This is my seed, although it leaves my hand, it will never leave my life, you will multiply. Except my seed, O Lord. Give Lord a hand clap of praise. Thank 
speaking of this, I'm playing an ancient Japanese song right now. It's called Two Me.
And so we're going to trust God uh, to do something very special for us. Let's, let's, all, let's all stand up and turn your Bibles to James chapter 1, verse 19. In my Bible, now there it is. James chapter 1, verse 19. Stand for the reading of the word. James chapter 1, verse 19. James is a very powerful, powerful book and it tells us a lot how to get along, how to uh, get things together. As a matter of fact, if you look at the very first first verse of James, it says, James is a servant of God. He's Jesus' half-brother and he doesn't even bring that up. He says, I'm a servant of God and of the Lord Jesus Christ. His bell tribes which are scattered abroad. Me and they've been dispersed. They're all over the place. You can look at it two ways. Scattered uh, meaning that there's just a big, big difficulty and they're all over the place. If you look at the Greek, it's dispersia, which means also that, that even though it looked like there was a lot of chaos, God was using it for His glory, dispersing people around, putting them where they need to be. So thank God that He's still in control. Amen? So James chapter 1, verse 19. Wherefore, my beloved brother, remember now, this, this is going to be a very powerful, powerful message today. I want you to, if you're taking notes, please take notes. Wherefore, my beloved brother, let every man, you know, say every man. Every man. I'll say every woman. Every woman. Be swift to hear, slow to speak, and slow to wrath. Wow, I want to do it one more time. Wherefore, my beloved brother, let every man be swift to hear, slow to speak, and slow to wrath. Stretch forth your hands this way. God, I love you, Lord. I praise your name. I thank you for your grace. I thank you for your mercy. I know, God, that you are alive and you are well and you are on the throne. And, God, you are calling the shots. We thank you, God, that although the world has gone crazy, you still keep your composure. Although the things around us look like they're out of control, you have not one time for one moment relinquished control. I ask you right now, Lord, to touch us, to anoint us, to help us, God, to understand your word in a brand new, fresh, vibrant, lively way that will actually bring change to our life and to our relationships in the name of Jesus. We thank you for it all. The church said? Amen. Amen, amen, amen. You can be seated. On the way down, tell somebody the past is behind us. The future is ahead of us. God is with us. And nothing, and nothing shall be impossible. Amen, amen. Give Lord a hand clap of praise. Then that now, 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 two men, two guys, they're walking on the beach and they found an old brass lamp. The first guy immediately starts rubbing it and sure enough, the genie popped out. Before he could say anything at all, the genie turned him into a crab. Wow. The other guy was so horrified and shouted, oh my gosh, why'd you do that, genie? Genie said, oh, he just rubbed me the wrong way. Okay, it kind of, it kind of worked. <laughs> that was a new book. I'm telling you, I got to be upset. That was a new book. All right, so look, here we go. Kids, keep it simple, same. This is part 4A. The reason I say 4A is because 4 is going to be divided up uh, into several parts, and we're going to do the first part of the course today. So, so how many would like to thrive in your relationship. Yeah. Uh, how many of you would like to, to thrive with your family? With your friends? With your spouse? With your children? With your co-workers? With your fellow, with your fellow church folks? What I'm getting ready to tell you, I want you to pay careful, careful attention because I've never preached it from this angle, ever. I've used the scripture a lot, but I've never preached it from this angle. Today is a fresh, new day. I'm going to show you how it's possible with this, that little rudder, to rescue, salvage, save, broken, or harmed relationships. 
So please, please listen carefully and watch what is happening because this will be well worth the time you spend sitting here today. Now, of course, this is the fourth principle, uh, and it is, watch this, the two, huh, the two for one special. How many like it when you go to the store and they go, oh, it's the two for one special today? I like that, because two for one means I'm going to get two for the price of one. Well, today, it's kind of like that, but it's going to be a little bit different. This is not the special you're buying. This is the special that you're giving, not selling but you're giving. And what I mean by a two for one special. Here we go. Every man should be quick to listen, slow to speak, slow to become angry. At age 119. Watch this. You've heard this said a thousand times over your life. How many have ever heard this? God gave us two ears and one mouth. How many times have you heard? I can't even put my hands and feet up. God gave us two ears and one mouth. And it sounds like God is trying to tell us he wants us to listen twice as much as we talk. Wow. Right there, I can just shut the book down. He wants us to listen twice as much as he wants us to talk. But now, we just get a little question get going here. Listening is much more complicated than it sounds. I'm going to get ready to show you some crazy ways some of us listen. But there is the physical part of the physical act of listening, meaning your ear is turned that way. But it can be physically hearing, but not engaged. And so actually, you really, has anybody ever been talking to you? And when they go, what do you think about it? You go, huh? Oh, I'm sorry, what did you say? I know none of y'all ever done that. Okay. okay. So you got you got your ear turned on, but you haven't you haven't got to receive it to your to the inside. So physically, the physical act. But then there's the mental and the emotional act when you're engaged. One is turned on, so it's receiving, but in order for it to do what it's supposed to do, now you've got to mentally, emotionally be engaged. So it's the, so, so it is not just the act. But it's being engaged. So, so get ready. And this is gonna, I'm telling you, this will help you more right here than knowing every Bible verse. You can quote every Bible verse there is. You can do whatever. But if you don't know this, if you don't get this, trouble is coming. So, so listening, if done correctly, watch this now. If listening is done correctly, it brings help. And it brings healing. Wow. Somebody said, wow. Wow. Did you know what they say talking? I said, listen. Listen and done correctly without you ever opening your mouth can bring help and healing in a relationship. If it's done incorrectly, it will hinder and it will hurt. The relationship. You know, I, I can tell you when I'm talking to somebody, I can tell right off the bat if just their hearing mechanism is turned on or they're engaged. I can tell. And there's times where while I'm talking to them and there's something very important and they're not engaged, guess what I do? I just shut up. And it's so amazing that sometimes people are so self-absorbed in what they're doing, they don't even notice that I got quiet. Mm. Wow. And I got a big mouth. I'm loud. You can't go. You, you don't know that. I quit talking something wrong. Okay. So now so watch this. Again, this is very, very, very powerful. Man's inability to communicate as a result of his failure to listen effectively. Remember, we're not talking about opening your mouth yet. We're talking about listening. I mean, you haven't opened your mouth yet. And you want to heal something? Yes. It is possible to heal without ever, it's kind of like this. You can win the battle without ever firing a shot. Think of your mouth as the shot, <laughs> okay? Never even fired a shot, and something special can happen. So now watch this now, watch. I don't know if you've noticed this, but our world is collapsing. The system is collapsing. Everywhere you look, government up, 
governments around homes from, from, from the very just, just minor relationships all the way up to the White House, all the way up to the Kremlin, and all the way around. Our world is collapsing. So I say amen. amen. What I've noticed in all this is that communication has all but stopped. There's a lot of saber rattling, but very little actual listening. You know, I watch politicians when they get asked questions. And if you ever notice when a politician gets asked, if you answer a yes or no question, all of a sudden he starts talking or she starts talking, and they start going all the way around the bush and talking about something else. And while they're talking about something else, they never even answer the question. I watch it all the time at press conferences, whether it be at North Carolina level, White House level, uh, local government. I watch the watch local government channel. You know, so what that tells me is they're not actually listening. Or they're listening, but they're not going to do what the listening requires. So, so there's a lot of saber rattling, but very little actual listening. See, the world needs to listen to God, and the world needs to listen to one, one another. If we don't learn how to listen, then there's no understanding, and there's no negotiation. We got our opinion, you got your opinion, and people call out their opinionated. I don't know about you. I'm not about any opinionated people. Don't point. Do you know anybody? Uh, opinionated people. I'm an opinionated person. But I've learned, especially in counseling, that I many times have found out that my opinion, honestly, may not be right. Wow, it's not Chris. Your opinion might not, do you think your opinion is always right? If you think your opinion is always right, this is for you. Because watch this. You get ready. I love this. Speak in such a way that others love to listen to you. And listen in such a way that others love to speak to you. Wow. I'm going to read that one again. Speak in such a way that others love to listen to you. Listen in such a way that others love to speak to you. There's certain people that when I start to talk, I don't even waste my breath with my opinion. And that's just very important. And it could harm somebody spiritually, physically, emotionally. If it's not going to harm anybody, I just let them roll. Because I know that they're just going to argue. Some argue for the sake of arguing. Some argue because they think they're always right. And I promise you, there is nobody always right. There's nobody always wrong, and there's nobody always right. There is a middle ground in there somewhere. Sometimes I'm right, sometimes I'm wrong. But I'm not always wrong, and I'm not always right. Because I don't know everything there is to know about the situation. So, get ready. This is going to save, this is going to save some people today. Some relationships. Everybody likes to be heard. They want to be understood. They want to know that what they think matters. Now again, remember that saying, God gave us one mouth and two ears so we would listen twice as much as we speak. This is deep. Well, everybody wants to be heard, not everybody wants to hear. Or not everybody wants to listen to understand. Maybe there's some reason Jesus gave us these next two scriptures. Ready? First, he gives us the golden rule. The golden rule is doing to others as you had them doing to you. Luke 6, 31. Next, the two for one special, my dear brethren, take note of this. Everyone should be quick to listen, slow to speak, and slow to become angry. Now, this is going to be different, but it's okay. I want you to watch this. Very important. Take your notes, please take them. Here, here you get ready to find them. Some, some, here's some, here's some, some uh, jewels, some pearls.
Are you listening? Have already shut you down. Are you listening? All right, ready? You ready? There are six kinds of listeners. All right? Six. Somebody say six. Six. Now you can look it up, and you can and if you're if you have a master's degree in Google search, go for it. But I guarantee you, Google search has killed more people and hurt more relationships and tore more equipment. Ready? Six different kinds of listeners. Number one, there's the preoccupied. I see these every Sunday. I look out and I go, they're preoccupied. They don't even know I'm here. Isn't that crazy? You say, really? Yeah, really. I look out and I go, they're not even, they're, they're here, but they're not here. They're not even listening. They're either playing a game on their phone or they're talking to somebody on Facebook and, or whatever. And I remember one day, I was, one day I remember years ago we had a packed out house. I remember somebody came to me after service and said, look at here. I said, what? And it said, I just want you to be aware of something. I said, what is it? And they said, well, you were preaching that really powerful message about 10 people, but pinging each other back and forth on Facebook in here about something to do about a car. And so the next week I started preaching on distraction. So, preoccupied. Preoccupied are these people that are armed and ready for an army. Excuse me. They, they come across as rushed. They constantly look around to do something else. If I'm talking to you and you're doing this, look. Don't be surprised if I stop talking. Because I know you aren't paying attention. Matter of fact, I know what you're doing. You're trying to wait for me to take a breath. A breath so you can tell me what you're going to tell me. Preoccupied. Let's see. I know what this problem is. I'm going to tell him what it is. And he can tell him what he wants. When he finally stops talking, I'm going to tell him what his problem is. Preoccupied. I try my best when somebody's talking to me. Unless it's constructively done, I don't do this. If you've been preoccupied, don't even shake your head. No, we all have. We're all guilty. Number two, the out lunchers. These people are physically here, but they're mentally not. They're determined. They're, they, this is determined by the blank look on their faces and the occasional drool. <laughs> they have no idea what you're talking about. <laughs> Again, they're preoccupied. They're out to lunch. They haven't heard a word you said. And I'm going to tell you this verse too. If you're having a problem with your spouse or your children, or your boss, those first two are a death sentence. They will kill communication in your marriage. They will kill communication with your kids. They will kill communication with your boss or with your co-workers because what happens is people know and they realize I'm talking to a brick wall. Has anybody ever told you they feel like I'm talking to a brick wall? Have you ever heard that? I feel like I'm talking to a brick wall. There's the brick wall. Okay, now, number three, the wild errors. These people are blue and show little reaction when listening. They don't seem to care about anything you have to say. Then, number five, get ready. I know this is not necessarily the easiest of all, but I, I want you to hear this because I don't want you to be one of these because I've been all of them. I have to fight myself every day not to be one of these. And sometimes I do not win with the fight. The commanders. These people are armed and ready for an argument. They listen only to find a flaw in what you say or how you say it. They enjoy disagreeing with whatever is said. Ah. Oh. Tearing my nerves. I'm trying to talk to somebody and try to explain something. And they're picking me apart while I'm trying to talk. 
And then no matter what I say, they're going to have to argue with it. Now, it's one thing if you just cut it up back and forth. It's another thing if you're really trying to do something. You're trying to communicate, and that person's doing that to you, that combatant. Because I'm going to tell you what happens is, eventually, even the calmest of people, their nerves get shot. Because they know you're just going to be combative just to be combative. You're just going to, you're just going to jump at it. You think it's funny. They don't. Then the analyst. The analyst, these are people who constantly are constantly the role of counselor. They're ready to provide you with a few of this is how you could have said that better, I guess, but very little, if any, even counts. I know y'all ready we get off this and get ready to get off okay, because there's a good one there, I promise you. Those first five types of listeners are usually ineffective, insufficient, and insulting. We're all guilty. If there's anybody here thinks you're not guilty, then we'll also add uh, blind. Huh. It's ineffective because you're not even engaged. You're not even listening. When you do listen, you only get part of the story because you're not engaged. You're looking around. You're watching the clock. You're waiting for them to be quiet long enough so you can put your 25 cents worth, not 2 cents, 25 cents worth in. It's insufficient. Why is it insufficient? First, it's ineffective. It's insufficient because, honestly, if you ever watched a TV show and said that it was a 30-minute show and you said, that's 30 minutes, I'll never get back. What about the conversation? You're trying to get something working. You're trying to talk to somebody, trying to work out a problem. And you go, I think we're worse off than we were before I started talking. And also, it's insulting. Especially if you've tried to do the other person in a way where they know you're listening, you're okay, <coughs> you've got this. But they, on the other hand, when you start talking, can't even give you five minutes to let you even get out what you've got to say. Matter of fact, when these people up, these people start doing this, I find myself speeding up what I've got to say. I speed it up, and I find myself not only just speeding it up, but I leave stuff out because I'm trying to hurry up and get something in there before the other person just goes ahead and just takes over. So now, I know you're ready for this to stop, right? If we get ready to get better, I promise. You will get better. This, remember, I told you this was going to be, this was going to be a turning point in somebody's life today. It's going to save a relationship today. To answer before listening, that's what it is. To answer before listening is a folly and a shame. Just so you didn't understand what I put up, you couldn't see what I put up there. Here it goes. He didn't answer the matter before he heard that it is a folly and a shame unto him. And the NLT says, spouting out before listening to the facts of both is both shameful. Before, before listening to the facts is both shameful and foolish. So, you ready? You ready to hear some good stuff now? <laughs> I know you're ready. Remember, these are killers. The first five of the six are killers. The preoccupied, the out-to-lunchers, the whatevers, the combatives, the analysts. The first five work more than they help, but there is a better way. Ready? Turn the green light on now. The engagers. The engagers, they are consciously aware listeners. They put down stuff. They put, they put their computer down. They turn the TV off. They, they, they uh, turn to you and they look at what you're saying versus going, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah, sure, right. Whatever you think's fine with me. You know what? Again, that's insulting. But an engager, they listen with their eyes, their ears, their hearts, and they want more than anything to hear what God is saying to them and what others are saying. To them. So they're listening at the highest level, the active level. I'm going to share some of this. It's not up here. I'm just going to share some with you. If you want to be an engager, if you want to be an active listener, don't you're going to have to write this down because it's not up here. 
First thing you got to do is pay attention. Do you know one of the greatest gifts you can give somebody that's hurt is to pay attention? Just to pay attention. I, I remember one time there was a guy that got caught up in a hunting accident. And I won't get into all the details, but he killed a man, but it was an accident. This man would not, he would come to Sunday school, when I got up to preach, he would leave because it always scared him and it always got to him. He wouldn't even talk to me. If I tried to talk to him, he'd run off. But this night, after he <coughs> killed that guy, I prayed all the way to the house. Lord, you didn't want him to talk to me. Help me to say the right thing. I walked in. He looked at me. He walked straight to me with everybody else around and he fell on me. And he started crying. He did not have time. I did not have time for the first five. The first five would have shut everything down. I grabbed him back. Didn't tell him everything's going to be all right, but that's a lie. I grabbed him, and I held him back. He cried on my shoulder, and I cried on his. It lasted for 30, 45 minutes, just crying on each other's shoulder. He finally looked at me and he said, how can I find peace? There was a door. And I said, you know where the real peace comes from? He said, yes, I've been running from it. I said, do you want it? He said, yes, please lead me to Christ. I led him to Christ that night. And that's all I did the whole night. And I showed him to cry some more. I was with him for two, three hours. The next day, he told his whole family, I'm going to send that to Pastor King because he knew exactly what to say. I said nothing. I just led him to the center of prayer after he asked. We became great friends after that. I watched God work some miracles in his life. What I did was, when I walked in the room, I paid attention to him. I didn't go, well, you know, I know you're hurt because I've been through this before and I, I saw this happen over here and blah, 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 blah. No, I just grabbed him and held him. It's called the Ministry of Presence. <laughs> you don't know what to say, so just be there. So, to pay attention, look directly to the speaker, to the speaker. Put aside distracting thoughts. Put away your little rebuttal. Just look at them and let them know that you're actually listening. Put away those crazy thoughts. Put away any crazy looks on your face. Or some of y'all that'd be really hard. Okay, I didn't get that. Pay attention. Number two, show that you're listening. Nod. Get your posture closer to them. Just let them know that you're hearing what they've got to say. Then provide feedback. Say something like, I know this had to be hard. What I'm hearing you say is, Tell me more. Now, how did that make you feel? And then, <coughs> make sure you defer judgment. Do not judge them. And make sure you respond appropriately. When I'm in B5, when I'm in a pit attention center, and I'm hearing people tell me what they're in there for and what they've done, and some of the stuff is so abhorrent. And they're saying, God can never forgive me for this. 
And I don't know how in the world God will ever even look at me again. And I'm facing 40 years, and I'm facing 50 years, or I'm facing life, and you're trying to talk to these guys. And walk in there, and one of them talk, I'm going to fill in the blank for them, and as soon as they open their mouth, I'm going to put judgment on them. I'd just as well stay home and watch them. And I hear it every week. Not just there, but wherever I go. Anywhere I go, it seems like God always puts somebody there that I'm talk to. So, so, get ready. I, I like to do this ears and across from the ears. I didn't put it up here either. Here's how I can listen. I'm going to spell ears. E-A-R-S. E. Eye contact. A, you give me your attention, your full attention. R, you give them respect and you resist the urge to just jump in there and tell them what it is. And S, seek understanding. That will change your conversation immediately. So now, watch this now. Let's get ready to go. I'm almost through. Somebody said, praise God. I don't even say praise God. Wave your hand. I'm not looking at you. All right. I know this is maybe not the easiest, but it's so good because it's going to change your life today. And even if you know this stuff, it's going to help you to refresh because they're having a look at this stuff. It refreshes me, and I think about it, and it changes the way I do business with people. So now next. This thing is one of the most loudest forms of kindness. Uh, listening is one of the most loudest forms of kindness. When they ask kids, what's one of the things they wish their parents could do? One of the number one things is, I just wish they would listen to me. Spouses, what is the biggest problem that you have? And one of the biggest things I always hear for sitting in there together is they just won't listen. Are you listening with the first five? Or are you listening to number six? Wow. Those first five, I've listened every time they open their mouth. And then you find out their listening style was in the first five. And go, no, you weren't listening. You were there. So watch. So how do we listen? You listen to understand. There is not the first five does not listen to understand. The first five listen to respond. The first five listen to reply. The first five listen to get, get it over with and let's go home. Resist the urge. And it is an urge to listen to respond. True? Sustained, active listening is a great act of faith and a great means of grace for both ourselves and for others in our fellowship. This is grace. Grace. This is not psychology. This is grace. Jesus listens to us. Did you know that? He listens to us. He doesn't interrupt us. He lets us go ahead and get all out. How many times have you said, I just, I just need to get to the altar and pray through when you get to honor and pray through, what you're doing is when you're praying through is you're telling Jesus everything and he's listening. And as he listens, he doesn't rebuttal you. He does not combat it with you. He is not ignoring you. And when you feel the touch of the Holy Spirit as it sweeps upon you and you know that he's heard you, all of a sudden you start feeling better and you walk away lighter. Grace. 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 So, there is a scripture, again, for listening. That every man be quick to hear, slow to speak, slow to anger. This is, as you can tell, this is my main scripture. It's so simple, yet it's almost impossible always to live. I'm going to give you, I'm going to give you uh, seven, you ready? it, <clears throat> seven don'ts for successful listening. Are you ready? Seven don'ts 
for successful listening. Ready? Everybody ready to say amen? amen. Finally, somebody said something. <laughs> all right. Number one, these are all scriptures. This is not some, remember, this did not come from Psych 101. This comes from B I B L E 101. This comes from G R A C E 707. Ready? Don't feel that you must do talking. These are, remember now, remember I said, these are seven don'ts for successful listening. Don't feel like you've got to be talking. But that man who shot another man, I didn't say a word. I listened to him. We cried. And he said, uh, he said uh, he, if he did, he would moan. And he would groan. And he said, I didn't need to do it. I didn't need to do it. And blah, 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 blah. And I did not do anything but hold him and cry with him. That's it. That's it. <clears throat> and the Holy Spirit let me know <clears throat> when I could pipe in is when, how do I find, oh, how do I find peace? There it went. It was like an hour into it. How can I find peace? And I told him. And Amen. that's the only thing I talked about. And I led him to the sinner's prayer and just held him and cried for another couple hours. But he said I knew exactly what to say the whole time. I said nothing. There's a time to hear. There's a time to tear. Or there's a time to tear. There's a time to mend. There's a time to be silent. There's a time to speak. Ecclesiastes 3 and 7. Number one, don't feel that you've got to be talking. Remember, this is how you can heal a relationship without ever pulling the trigger. Matter of fact, some of y'all, your relationship will get a whole lot better if you can learn to take your finger off the trigger while you're listening. There's times I just do this. You might not see it, but I'm doing this. While you're talking, in my head I'm going. Not right, I'm going to say this to myself. You know, wait for it, wait for it. Nope, nope. I just sit there shaking my head. Then I'm watching them, I'm listening to them and say, tell me more. How did it make you feel? And then it all will lead them into telling me how they feel. Versus I already know how they feel. I already know what they're doing. So, number one, you don't have to do the talk, but you don't do not have to do the talking. Number two, don't give premature advice. He who answers before listening, that is his, that is his folly and his shame. Proverbs 18, 13. I know what your problem is. My cousin had that. My father in law put in prison. And, 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 and blah, 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 blah. Uh, there have been times where I've asked God when I'm in a, in a, a group session especially in a group session or a group setting I say God please put some, some heavenly duct tape on their mouth and some of them say God put some duct tape on mine <coughs> don't feel like you got to do talking number two don't get premature advice Number three, don't become defensive. I can tell when I talk to somebody, you come defensive, and all of a sudden, instead of them doing like this, <coughs> not doing like this. I try my best. Remember now, I'm not always 100% on this. I have to fight like this too. This is a human fight. We are all in this together. Don't become offensive. A man's wisdom gets impatience. It is to his glory to overlook an offense. Proverbs 19 and 11. It is good stuff. B I B L E 7 or 101 G R A C E 707. Number four. Don't become hot tempered. A hot tempered man stirs up dissension, but a patient man calms the quarrel. Proverbs 15 and 18. I can't tell you the times I'm sitting in a group situation, whether it be with a husband and wife, or be with some co-workers, or be with uh, B5, or somewhere where it's a group situation, and somebody says something, the other person jump up, and they're ready to start swinging. And I go, huh, 
You need, you look, you, you need, you need to back it down, please. Back it down. This is not solving the thing. Put your gun back in the holster, White Earp. Go on, Marshall Dillon. You and Chester need to leave. Y'all just were talking to find a solution. Don't be so hot tempered. Matter of fact, it aggravates me to be talking to somebody and all of a sudden I go, You don't know what you're talking about! I'm going, Whoa! So you know what I do? I shut down. Don't say anything else. Just watch me sometimes in, in some of these things. You see me shut down? It's because some of this stuff's happening. I just shut down. Because I know I'm just wasting my time, I'm wasting my breath. And whatever I do say is going to be misconstrued. So, just shut up. Don't laugh at others. There's times where laughter is needed, but for the most part, don't be laughing at others. A man who lacks judgment derides his neighbor, but a man of understanding holds his tongue. Don't laugh at or belittle. Because sometimes when you're laughing, people take it as you're belittling me. Proverbs 11, 12. Number six, don't hold on to hatred. Hatred stirs up dissension, but love covers all wrong. Proverbs 10 and 12. The book of James is the New Testament book of Proverbs. Did you know that? Don't hold on to hatred. I can't fix it if I'm not even going to listen to you because either I've got to do the talking or I'm going to get premature advice, or I'll become defensive, or I'm hot tempered. I just laugh it off. I just scorn it. Yeah, you don't even know what you're talking about. Or I'm holding on to uh, an offense with the other person. And the number one kiss of death, when I, back in Dunn, North Carolina, there was a hospital called Bessie Johnson Hospital. And they kept having problems with their chaplain program. Problem after problem after problem. So they put an ad in the paper, <clears throat> and they said, all those that are interested in helping in a pilot program, we can get the stuff fixed again and get things started again, uh, show up at this meeting. So we showed up at the meeting. About 100 guys showed up at the meeting. We're ready to see something change. She said, the, the, the head person said, uh, she was a, a, a nurse, she said, I'll be getting up with some of y'all soon. A couple days later, I'm gonna get a uh, letter in the mail, fast for Linton. Who wants you to be part of this seven person pilot program? And so for months, I mean months, I mean like a couple of weeks, I mean for months, there's just seven of us. <clears throat> we said in close contact, we, we, we Always talk about what worked, what didn't work, how to get things done. And then after about six months or so, we called in all the other hundreds of chaplains and we did the training. And I remember my very first training session with those guys. Oh, and then we also, at Boys Creek, Cameron University, the theological part, they would send their students over for to train them too. And I remember, I'm sitting there with all these guys. And I said, how many in here remember what Judas did to Jesus in the garden? Of course, everybody said, well, he picked them out. And he kissed him. I said, you know what that's called? And said, well, I said, the kiss of death. And I said, when you're here, you're going to be working with Christians, Catholics, Buddhists, Muslims, atheists, Satanists. And you're going to hear things that might rock your world. I said, but if you can't keep it between you and them, and they can feel comfortable, that they can just get out of their system to talk to you, you need to leave the program. 
Because when you do, when you tell what they told them, it's called a kiss of death. Don't break a confidence. A group, I mean, a gossip betrays confidence, but a trustworthy man keeps a secret. Proverbs 11 and 13. You're going to hear some things. Most people know that you're comfortable to talk to and that you're going to practice all this stuff. People start talking to you. When I first went to the B5, nobody would talk to me. And I, and I said, why is nobody talking to me? And I was wearing a badge. Because I'm an assistant chief, so I had to wear a badge. They said, where's the going to be there? there? So they saw my badge and it said, Sheriff sent you in here to get information on us. I said, no, that's not how it works. They said, that is how it works. You're in here posing to be a counselor. And you get information to go back on our case. I said, I promise you that's not happening. They had to go. The sheriff had to tell them. Give them a promise. That when they talk to me, it's all definite, definite immunity. Nothing they tell me well, she made me go to court <coughs> to testify. We have a group, we have individual in the box. And I'll tell them, if you want to talk about it in a group, that's fine. But if you need to be secret or you need just to talk, you may go in the box. But once it's in that box, in here, in group, they've got cameras on you. They're watching you. They're listening. When you get on home wave and talk to your family, video conferencing, they're watching you. They're listening to you. They're recording you. <laughs> They're, 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 you get your charges, you get picked it up because you just keep running your mouth. I said, but the sheriff did something special. When I go in that little box, there's not a recorder, there's not a camera. They can feel free to talk to me. And when they call me on the runway, it doesn't cost them a dime or me. It's not recorded and it's not monitored. So they can feel free to talk about anything they want to talk about. And I promise you, I'm going to carry a lot of stuff to my grave. But I'm done. In order for God's grace to abound. Every last one of us have more power here in a relationship than we do here. I promise you. Active listening actually helps the other person work out their problem. Active listening makes it where they want you, want you to help guide them out of it. Active listening does a lot. Just remember, G R A C E 707. Be swift to hear. Swift to hear. Now say it with me. Swift to hear. Now, if you want to copy of this stuff, I'll, I'll make you a copy of it and I'll stick it out there because. Next week, we're going to go a little bit further into this one, and then we're going to go into slow speak. And then we're going to go into slow to anger. So we got these coming. These are going to three parts coming. Well, everybody understand right now, Brandon, can you come play something?
just last week, I was talking to somebody that does not go here, but they're in my family. And they were asking about a situation. I'm not going to go into the situation, but there's somebody in our family that was really, really sick. <coughs> and this person lives a long ways away. <coughs> and so they said, <coughs> So, what's going on? I said, This person's having a problem with something in their body, and they're having a problem. The person that said, I'm sorry, is there anything I can do? Immediately said, I was having that problem too, but you know what? Doctor told me it was going to be okay, and, and I went and I had went through six months of whatever radiation, or whatever, and I'm fine, blah, 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 blah. And I'm still standing there. I didn't even finish talking. So they asked about somebody else, and I started talking. And before I ever got out of my mouth, they started talking over me and telling me all about what was the problem and how to fix it and how it was fixed and how they took care of it. And so, you know what I did? I just quit talking. Just quit. Find a person on the line and said, You still there? I think I do a lot of talking. Five minutes. You still there? Oh, yeah, I'm still here. What do you think? I said, I, I think you're right. Now you start talking about something in the weather. Because I knew this person was opinionated and nothing I said was going to do anything. This week I got the craziest phone call. Yeah, the week and then yesterday I went and signed papers. <laughs> you know who called me Monday. And I said, What is it? And they said, uh, Do you know this guy? And he got the guy's name. I said, Sure. And they said, This was you know he died last night. I said, well, we went out to the preacher's funeral. And they said, no, 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 no. I said, what is it? He said, in 2015, he come in here, paid for his cremation, and said, David Linton is to be the receiver of my ashes. And he's to take care And I was, when I went back, tried to be about 2015, I remember being in Woody's. He's over here, I'm trying to eat, and he was insistent. So I pushed, pushed the food down, and I said, talk to him. He got talking, and he said, you know what? I don't think anybody would want to do anything with when I died. You know, blah, 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 and on down the line, and we had already been to a funeral. He was a pallbearer at a funeral I was at. I was preaching. He looked at me and said, would you mind if when they came at me that I could get ashes to you? Conversation? I said, sure. It'll be okay. That was the last I heard of it. 2015 till last Monday. Yesterday I was in there working at the funeral I'm doing this afternoon. And, and the funeral director said, Now when you get through this family, I need you to come into the office. I go in the office. And I have to sign permission for the cremation. I have to say, I will be responsible. And it all stemmed from me listening. Everybody else he talked to, talked junk to him, they, they belittled him, they carried on with him, they made it feel like he was a bother. And I listened.
everybody carry this home with you. Think about what I said, all these things, because I know it's been the most pleasant of all, but it weren't me, it weren't jumping at us, it's just and that's how we do things. And I'm guilty of all of them too. Yes. 
70 complaints. 70. <coughs> These were terrible complaints. These could be worth a lot, a lot of money. So what they did was they hired somebody. They had the ability to listen. And that person listened to all those complaints. Just listen. Actively. All 70 complaints that were turned into lawsuits were dropped. They didn't do anything with them. They listened. What the gift of the pension and the gift of grace to the can do. Everybody pray with me. Ready? Father, Father, I love you. I love you. I praise you. I praise you. I thank you for your grace. I thank you for your mercy. I thank you for your mercy. I thank you, for your mercy. I thank you God, I thank you that God. you are alive. That you are alive. And on the throne. And God, you hear me. And God, you hear every time. Every time. I call. And Father, I thank you that you give me grace when I come to you. Help me to give grace when others come to me. Especially the gift of listening. And I thank you for it. In the name of Jesus we pray. And the church said, Amen. Amen, amen, amen. Give Lord a hand clap of praise. God is good. Guess what? God loves you. He loves you. Glory. He loves you. That's right. All right. Let's say Lord's Prayer. And then Brother Doug dismisses the prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses. As we forgive others, against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. The light is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Father, thank you for this day. Thank you for this time that you've given us to come together and worship you in spirit and truth. Lord, we thank you for your truth that, you, that has been brought to us today. Father, we ask that you would help us to be quick to hear, slow to speak, and even slower to act. We would go forth in your name and help others come to your sacred house. We just thank you for this. Thank you, my brothers. Bring us back to the next moment at one time. Jesus Christ, thank you for us.